קודם כל, עם כל הדברים האלה, רגע, בואו נצא ונפקח את העין למה שקורה בחו"ל, ואיך בכלל תופסים את המלחמה הזאת ואיך היא מסוכרת בחו"ל. מוקדם יותר דיברתי עם תום גרוס, עיתונאי בריטי, בשיחה מאוד מעניינת על הסיקור התקשורתי של המלחמה בישראל, ברחבי העולם ובעיקר באנגליה. בואו נראה. How does the international media coverage actually affecting the public opinion on this war? Well, I think it affects it a lot. Look, we see a lot of demonstrations on the streets of Western capitals in London yesterday, 300,000 people. But also we see street protests shutting down railway stations in Britain, Grand Central in New York and so on. But in my mind, these are kind of crazy protesters or some Islamists. In my mind, the media coverage for the mainstream media is a more dangerous phenomena for Israel because they are showing all the time, 24-7, pictures of dead Palestinian babies. They are saying repeatedly that Israel is bombing hospitals all the time, even though it's not true. They are inviting guests who use words like genocide, apartheid, and so on. If you're an ordinary viewer and you're watching and you think Israel is an apartheid state or you think Israel is committing genocide, of course you're going to be against it or Israel is deliberately, in, indiscriminately murdering babies, as you use the word murder. And so the mainstream media, not just the BBC in Britain, but Sky News and American stations and Canadian, Australian stations, They are inflaming the tensions, both by the, uh, both by the um, uh, content, but also the quantity of coverage, because there is no other conflict in the world that they cover anything like this, even when they're involved, even when American or British planes bombed against ISIS three or four years ago in Mosul or Raqqa. There was almost no coverage. Only one month ago, in our, our, um, the Armenian, Armenian Christian population from Nagorno-Karabakh was driven out by Azeris, by Azerbaijan, and there's almost no coverage. So in my mind, the media, what they're leaving out is more dangerous than um, these street protests. And finally, it brings pressure on the politicians. So we see President Macron in France calling for a ceasefire, i.e. to leave Hamas in place. And I think he's doing so because of domestic public pressure, constant TV stuff. So far, we see the British government and the American government holding fairly firm behind Israel. But this can change any day. If, if uh, one bomb drops on a hospital, there can be a huge pressure on Israel. What? does the Israel advocacy doing wrong? It could be much, much better. Not just the current government of Netanyahu, but successive governments have not taken advocacy seriously enough. And I don't think they understand. They're a little bit behind. It's not just about using the word terrorism. It's not just about producing facts and figures. It's what resonates. So it's about having, you know, you've got to be a bit more assertive, like where are the feminists in the West when, when women, Israeli women were raped? You know, they say believe all women. They They push people out of, uh, out of a job in Hollywood for, for, you know, I don't know, Kevin Spacey, whoever. Well, there's not a single demonstration by feminists. Where is Black Lives Matter? They seem to think that all Israelis are white, whatever that means. You know, where is the support, for example, for Bedouin? And Arab Israelis were also killed. They were also taken hostage. No mention at all. So... Israel needs much better spokespeople, much, much better. They need to be properly trained. They need to be doing it in multiple languages. You need someone who is fluent in French, who has grown up in France, who understands how, the body language of the French media. But do you think, Tom, that it's a lost game, that it's a game that we cannot win in, actually? It's a game we have to win, or Israel has to win. I tell you why. Because there's a kind of drip, drip, drip demonization of Israel. I am less worried 
by people on the streets who just shout jihad or from the river to the sea. They don't support the existence of Israel. At least we know where they stand. What I'm worried about is the mainstream, the younger generation who are now at elite universities who will be in power in 10 or 20 years. They think Israel is the most evil state on earth. They know nothing of history. They don't understand what apartheid was. They don't understand what genocide actually means. They don't understand any of this. Look, Israel's not perfect, but it needs to be explained that there are almost every country in the world has a problem with its minorities. I mean, a problem discriminating against them. No country is perfect. Almost every country has a border dispute. I'm born in Britain. My country, an island, has one land border with the Republic of Ireland in Northern Ireland. And there's a dispute on that border. There are walls all over the place, all over Europe. Walls have gone up. America wants to build one with Mexico, all over Asia. So spokespeople also need to push back against uh, ignorant um, interviewers on, uh, on Western, British and other television stations and say, well, wait a second, Britain bombed Raqqa and Mosul, huge cities, Mosul, second biggest city in Iraq, 3.7 million people, in other words, twice the population of Gaza, thousands of civilians died. Most educated British people aren't even aware that Britain bombed it. So uh, they have to push back and push back hard, but it's not enough just to say, oh, they hate us anyway, or they're anti-Semites, because lots of people do not hate Israel and are not anti-Semites, but they're ignorant and they're susceptible. You know, and if they just think Israel is recklessly killing babies, of course they're going to be against Israel. They need to explain what's happening much, much better. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Tom Gross, thank you very much for this very enlightening uh, uh, conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy.